Looking back a few years, there are so many tips that I could have given my old self. I graduated from the University of Toronto with a degree in statistics and economics a few years ago. I'm currently married. My husband and I just bought our first house. We're continuing to invest and build a foundation for our 30s. But there are some things that I really wish I knew earlier. Lessons that took sacrifices and losses. Of course, you will make your own mistakes, but I hope that by watching this video, you will have a better starting position. These are also the things that I tell my younger siblings who are currently in university, so let my big sister voice reach your ears too. Practical tip number one, learn how to budget and invest. If you haven't learned how to budget yet, this is the right time to do it. Overall, this might be arguably the most important skill that you need to learn. Have you ever watched Dave Ramsey videos? But together we have probably just under a million dollars in debt and we want to know how to get debt free. Most of those people are in trouble because they never learn how to budget, how to say no to themselves and set priorities. I plan on making more videos about investing and my investment strategy, but overall spend time right now learning about different investment accounts and how to be a long-term investor. When I started investing a couple of years ago, I did didn't know at all what I was doing. After my superficial research, I bought stocks and companies that somebody recommended or some website said that they had a nice balance sheet without understanding anything. And that's how I lost over $2,000 in my first year. This is definitely something that you can avoid. Be smarter and look at a bigger picture. Practical tip number two, learn how to sell. I'm not telling you to become a salesperson unless that's what you want. What I mean is learn how to sell yourself and your ideas. After you graduate, your first challenge will be convincing someone to hire you. You, someone who just stepped in into the adult world, probably has very little work experience in their field and might have never been on a payroll before. So why should they hire you? Understand how to make yourself stand out and sell someone on the vision of future you who would be absolutely valuable to them. All of it has to do with how you speak. Personally, I find people who cannot keep one train of thought very difficult to chat with. Learn how to build an effective argument, read social cues, and be a good listener. This is where reading a few books might be helpful. So here are a few that I would recommend to you. How to talk to anyone, The Art of Witty Banter, Mastering Logical Fallacies, The Definitive Guide to Flawless Rhetoric and Bulletproof Logic. Practical tip number three, seriously learn how to use Excel or Google Sheets and AI tools. Excel is not only for people who are going into accounting. It's for everyone. I work in content marketing, for example, and I use Google Sheets every single day. I also use them for personal budgeting, planning trips, my investment portfolio, and so on. When you know how to write a formula, build tables, and automate some processes, it makes your life so much easier. Take it a step further by learning some AI tools. Test out as many as you possibly can and try to see how you can use them to make your life better. AI is going to be a big part of your future, so the sooner you get on board, the better it will be for you. Now let's move on to mindset advice. These practical tips will allow you to achieve at least an average lifestyle. However, these bigger, more philosophical mindset shifting ideas will give you a shot at being truly happy. Advice number one, tell me who your five closest friends are and I'll tell you who you are. This can be tough, but you need to take a really hard look at everyone who surrounds you, be it your family, friends, or partner. Your relationship with each of them has to be mutually beneficial and healthy. If you think that someone in your life doesn't understand you or brings you down, talk to them. Have an adult conversation. If you took my second practical tip into account, you should be able to speak and argue your point freely and effectively get a response. I had to clean my personal friend group quite harshly in the past few years. With some of them, I knew that the relationship was one-sided. If I didn't invite them to hang out, we would never hang out. The other person was seeing more benefit from the relationship, whereas I didn't see anything positive from it. On the other hand, there were some friendship that just faded away because we had less and less in common. Life moves on, people change, and you should be able to let go. Overall, people who surround you have a huge effect on who you are, both financially and mentally. Make sure they give you positivity, love, care, and mutual support. Advice number two, realize that opportunities are not waiting for you. You have to create them yourself. When I was little, I loved watching America's Next Top Model. The 90s and 2000s models often told stories of how they were just scouted by an agent while they were shopping with their mom in the supermarket. That kind of made me think, okay, opportunities are waiting for me. 
but that's not true. Things like that are like winning a lottery ticket, extremely rare. Instead, you should focus on looking for those opportunities yourself. Let's say you want to start a business in the future. What are you doing to get to that goal? Are you learning everything that you possibly can about the industry? Are you trying to look for gaps? Are you actively talking to the right people, networking, and gaining experience? I still have to remind myself of this advice every day. So switch your mindset and move towards action instead of anticipation. Advice number three, definitely an obvious one, but prioritize building healthy habits. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Do you know how to cook for yourself, have a good hygiene and exercise? This might sound like a boring advice, but in the past few years, I realized how much of a problem it can be for some of us. Advice number four, welcome change. For some of you, this might be unnecessary advice, but for me, it was definitely needed. For example, when Instagram first came out, I was so skeptical about it. I thought it was a way to boost your ego and didn't want to get involved. Instead, what I should have done is experimented and saw opportunities. Those who did that are millionaires by now. One of the waves of today is AI, for example. Are you fully welcoming that change and working on it? Obviously, there might be some ethical reasons for you too. For example, if I strongly believe that ego boosting through Instagram is not good, that's fine too. I would have gone and looked for a new wave. The point that I'm trying to make is that every few years, something comes along that acts as a massive life boost for those who jump on it. I want you to be open-minded and ready to grab it. I hope you found this episode helpful. I'm currently finishing up my home series and will be starting to work on the investment series. So please subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes.